In this video, we'll take a look at the chi-square test for independence. Uh, just be aware that this is sometimes just called the chi-square test or sometimes it's called the chi-square test for homogeneity. The reason we use the chi-square test is we want to determine if there's association or a relationship between two categorical variables. And we use a two-way table to look at the data in, uh, in the two-way tables. Sometimes those two-way tables are called contingency tables. It just depends on the, the text that you're using. So let's take a look at the assumptions and then go through some of the characteristics of the test, then we'll look at an example. So with the assumptions, we have to have two categorical variables, and we're interested in the association between them. Um, typically, we have a row variable and a column variable, which we'll get to in just a second with the contingency table. Uh, we want to make sure randomization was used to gather the data. Remember, we're trying to eliminate or reduce uh, sampling bias along with making sure that every um, individual has an equal opportunity to be chosen. So in other words, uh, reducing the bias through the random selection. Um, the expected cell counts are at least five in all cells. I like to simplify the, um, the assumptions. Um, this third assumption is really about making sure that we have a large enough uh, sample size where we have representation in all the cells. Uh, some texts will say that uh, no cell counts are less than one and no more than 20% of the expected cell counts are less than five. So uh, with, with this, uh, we're going to look at cell counts within here and we'll get to what the expected cell counts are in just a second. So a two-way table or a contingency table looks something like this. We have our row variable right here, which is our explanatory or independent variable. And then we have our column variable up here, which is our response or dependent variable. And then in here, the O's, those represent the observed values. So when we take a random sample, those would be the observations of um, this individual A right here, given that they fall in this category right here. So we're looking really at kind of these conditional um, type of relationships right here when we go through and we look at this. And then at the end of the contingency table, we have the row totals over here. And then at the bottom of this, we have the column totals right here. And this N is our sample size, sometimes also called the grand total. The E's in here, these are the expected values. And this would be what we expect to get um, given the respective row and column totals. Uh, uh, in comparison to the, the sample size. So the, the expected um, cell counts, um, or sometimes called just the expected values or the expected cell counts, we calculate by taking our row total and multiplying that by our column total divided by our sample size. I'm just spelling it out right there, the row total and the column total. We're talking about these things in red and green respectively. We find the product of those, and then we divide by our total sample size right there, the grand total. Um, with the hypothesis statements, uh, we have uh, uh, usually something is independent of something. And the way that I typically write it is the row variable is independent of the column variable. Now there's another way that we could write this as well is uh, for h sub zero, and that would be there is no association between the two categorical variables. And if you think about it, if two variables are independent, that means uh, they don't really have the association or the connection between those. In h sub a, I like to write this way, uh, the row variable is not independent of the column variable. And if they're not independent, I know some textbooks will write dependent, but I like to kind of think back to the uh, types of tests that we've done before. We've had things like the not equal to sign in H sub A. We have the strict inequality and I think sometimes with students um, the not independent makes it a little bit clearer for them to think about that in terms of what we've done with previous uh, hypothesis tests. But again this could be also there is association between the two categorical variables and we would want to spell out what those uh, categorical variables are when we write the hypothesis statements. Now to calculate our test statistic um, this is the chi-square statistic, and we find this by taking the sum of the observed minus the expected value squared divided by the expected value. Now, one thing I do want to mention before I go any further with this is when we calculate these expected values, this becomes paired data right here. This observed value is paired with this expected value, and that's true for each one of these observed and expected values in each one of the cells in this table up here. So uh, we're dealing with paired data when we go through and do this. And I'm not using the subscripts to write this out just to make it a little less um, cluttered when we, we take a look at the formula. And a couple things with the chi-square uh, distribution is the chi-square distribution is a right skew distribution. It starts at zero on the lower end and goes towards positive infinity to the right. 
and we're typically doing a right tail test, which means we reject H sub zero uh, with the right tail, and then the fail to reject region is over here in the left. So now that we know a little bit about the uh, characteristics of the chi-square test, let's take a look at an example. So in example one, the solution will be in the blue, and then um, kind of the, the assumptions and some of the other stuff is going to be in black, some of the things that were spelled out above. So first of all, we'd like to explore the association between a standard concert t-shirt that would be given out at a sporting event or a concert and gender of a person uh, that will wear the t-shirt. So we took a random sample of 100 people, which is summarized in the two-way table below. Um, the observed counts are in red and the expected counts are in green. We're going to use an alpha equal 0 0.10 level of significance in the chi-square test of independence uh, to determine if gender is independent of t-shirt size. Okay, So I went through uh, the red values. These would be values from the sample. So when we selected these 100 people, uh, we asked them a couple questions. We asked, uh, first of all, what is your gender? And we're treating gender as a binary variable. And then after we asked that question, we probably asked what size uh, concert t-shirt would you wear, a small, medium, or large, and then they answered that as well. And we recorded all that information, we placed that in this two-way table. So now I'm gonna give one example of calculating the um, expected values, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of how we do this. So in order to calculate the expected value of the first cell, so the first row in the first column, which I'm talking about this 25.01 right here in green, but this is the first cell right here, we would take the row total, which is 61, and then we'd multiply that by the column total, which is 41. So if you kind of follow out, and follow down, those are the row and columns that intersect this value of 15 right there. So we find that product on the top, and then we divide by this value over here, which is the grand total, and that comes out to be 20, uh, 2,501 divided by 100, which would be 25.01. So we'd go through and we'd do that for each of these cell counts, and you can verify that on your own if you want. So for example, if you wanted to find the 11.7, the, the expected, um, cell count right here for uh, row two, column two, you would simply take this value of 30, the column total, and multiply it by the row total of 39, and then divide that by 100, and that should come out to be 11.7. And you do that individually for each one of these cells in order to calculate those expected um, cell counts right there. Step one are conditions, and these are a series of questions that we go through and we answer in order to determine whether or not uh, we can use this test or not. And these are specific to the chi-square test for independence. So the first assumption or condition is that we have two categorical variables and we're interested in the association between them. So the two categorical variables we're looking at are gender, which are male and female, and t-shirt size, which is small, medium, and large. By the way, the variable gender, that's our categorical variable. Sometimes these are referred to as the levels of that variable, male and female. And then t-shirt size would be the other categorical variable, and the levels of the t-shirt size would be small, medium, and large. Randomization was used to gather the data. Um, we said that the individuals were, were selected through a random sample. Again, we're trying to eliminate or reduce bias and then also ensure that the sample somewhat resembles the population. Um, the third assumption is about the sample size, but we're looking at it in terms of the expected cell counts. By the way, these are sometimes also called expected frequencies. The expected cell counts are at least five. I'm using a slightly simpler version than uh, the one that was in the parentheses that we saw initially. So the answer is yes. All of these values in green, which I got up here in the two-way table in green, um, and I'm writing this in matrix form, all of those values are five or larger in each of the individual cells. So we satisfy this in order to go ahead and use the chi-square distribution. So step two is writing our null and our alternative hypothesis. And I'll scroll down just a little bit so you can see this, but we have our gender is one of our categorical variables and t-shirt size is our other categorical variable. So for H sub zero, we're gonna say gender is independent of t-shirt size. And then H sub A is gender is not independent of t-shirt size. So it's a little bit different because we're writing out these hypothesis statements in words this time rather than using the inequalities like we've done in previous hypothesis tests. But hopefully this makes sense in how we follow along. Um, the other way that we could have written this is there is no association between gender and t-shirt size for H sub zero. And H sub A could be there is association between gender and t-shirt size. 
So that brings us to step three, where we're going to calculate our level of significance, our test statistic, and our p-value. So the level of significance was given, that was 0 0.10. That's going to be our alpha value, the chance of committing what's called type 1 error. And um, in order to calculate our degrees of freedom, which I like to do over here in the level of significance side, we have to know the number of rows we have and the number of columns we have. So in that two-way table, if you recall, we had two rows. We had the gender in the rows, which were male and female. And then in, in the columns, we had three columns, which were the t-shirt sizes, which were small, medium, and large. So we're going to use those, uh, those uh, number of rows and number of columns in order to calculate the degrees of freedom, which are calculated by taking the rows minus 1 times the columns minus 1. And when we do that, we end up with a degrees of freedom equal to 2. Now the chi-square test statistic, I'm not going to write it out in long form right here. We'll scroll down in just a minute and we'll see how we calculate this. Uh, but we're basically taking um, this and going through order of operations to do it. So first we want to take the observed value and subtract it from its respective expected value. After we find that difference, we'll square that difference. And then we'll take that square difference and then we'll divide it by the expected value that goes along with that observed value. And then when we're all done, we'll sum all those individual values up. And that value will come out to be 22.905. So just recall up here that these are the corresponding observed and expected values. So 15 has to be paired with 25.01, 19 has to be paired with 18.3, 27 has to be paired with 17.69, 26 has to be paired with 15.99, 11 has to be paired with 11.7, and 2 has to be paired with 11.31. So let's take a look at how we'd go about calculating this. So I think it's easiest to do this if we break it down in terms of order of operations. So I have my observed values right here in red, and I have my expected values right here in green. And notice these are the corresponding values right here. I match them up. The first thing I did in terms of order of operations, I started inside the parentheses and did O minus E. That's what this column represents. So I'm subtracting this 25.01 from 15, and that gives me the negative 10.01, and then respectively for all those values. Um, something interesting about this is when we sum up these values right here, they should always sum to be zero right there. So that's if you're doing this by hand, that's a great way to check your work and make sure that you did um, your observed or your expected values correctly, you calculated those correctly. Now, if there's some rounding, it should be very close to zero. So, if these values are rounded to some degree, uh, it should be very close to zero. It might not be exactly zero, but it should be fairly close, okay? After we take the observed minus the expected, we're going to take these values and we're going to square them. So, uh, 10, negative 10.01 squared gives me 100.2001. And then I do that respectively for each of these values right there. So this is the square of those values. They should all be positive in this column. After I calculate the square of those values, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this 100.2001 and divide that by this 25.01 right here. This is the corresponding expected value to that square difference. And when I do that, that's 4.0064. And I do that respectively for this as well. So I take 0.49 and I divide that by 18.3. That's 0 0.027. And so we'd go through and we'd do all of those values right there. The last thing that we'll do is we'll sum up this column right here. And this gives us that test statistic of 22.905. So that's where that value is coming from. So going back up to the top up here, that's where we got the value of 22.905. And that's our test statistic. The next step, we want to use that test statistic in order to calculate the p-value. Now, the nice thing about the chi-square test for independence is we're doing a right tail test with this, okay? So that means our, our test statistic is going to be our lower bound. And since it's a right skew distribution, if that's our lower bound, we're going to uh, find the area to the right of that. So that's going to be our lower bound, and our upper bound is going to be 1 million. Our degrees of freedom will be 2. So in order to do this on our calculator, we're going to use the chi-square CDF function. Here are the inputs right here. This is what I put in for those values right there on the calculator. In a later video, I'll show you where that function is and how to use it. Um, and then when we use that function, we come up with a p-value of 0.0000106. So that's a fairly small p-value. Hopefully, um, if we've done enough of the hypothesis testing, we recognize that really small p-values indicate we're going to reject h sub 0. 
But we'll take a look at that a little bit more when we look at uh, step four, which is our decision rule. So here is step four. There's two approaches to this. We could use the critical value approach or we could use the p-value approach. In my class, I'm gonna focus on the p-value approach. And then the critical value approach just compares the test statistic to the, uh, the chi-square value based on the alpha value and degrees of freedom. And there it is. If you wanna look at that, you can probably figure it out using the chi-square table to find this 4.61. But we'll take a look at this decision rule right here. So we would say um, if our p-value is less than or equal to our alpha value, then we reject h sub zero. So in this case, our p-value is 0 0.0000106, which is less than our alpha value of 0.1, so we'll reject h sub zero. In the conclusion, we're gonna say there is sufficient evidence to support that gender is not independent of t-shirt size on average in the population. Um, this, this part that I have underlined right here, that is H sub A right there. Um, and we're just placing A sub in, a in, H sub A in there and we're saying there is sufficient evidence to support that, the gender is not independent. So another way to kind of think of that, if it's not independent, that means it's dependent. Gender depends on t-shirt size or t-shirt size depends on gender, however you wanna look at that, which means there's some association between gender and t-shirt size. So hopefully this gives you enough information to understand, at least at a, 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 a general level, of what the chi-square test of independence is used for and how we conduct it.